Welcome to the Fail Forward podcast. I've met many people over the years who have failed and given up. The point of this podcast is to get people to understand that failure is part of the process. Welcome back to the Fail Forward podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about burnout and how it affects our business and how it affects us. Quite often in the last 16 years of running businesses, I've burnt myself out to the point that I've had to spend a day, two days, three days in bed, just completely wiped out. And as I've now mentoring 43 business owners now, part of our mastermind, Tree Surgery Mastermind, I'm now talking to more and more business owners who have experienced and go through the same things on a regular basis. And what is burnout? So burnout is when you just work, 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 you put all your effort into life, into your business, and then you end up where you are just frazzled. And at that point, it can feel like overwhelm, depression, um, burnout, no energy, just n- no uh, motion, uh, feel very neutral or what I'd say numb. I used to say to my wife, Sarah, I'm a malfunctioning human being, especially as you guys know, I've been through some addiction problems and some some other challenges with mental health. And it would always seem to come up at these moments um, when I would work, 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 work. Um, as I've said in the past, my dad always said when I failed my GCSEs, Henry, um, don't worry, be committed, be hardworking, um, be determined and never give up. Now, actually, when I went and spoke to my dad recently after I had my, um, had my stroke, um, we talked around why I moved around so much or why we as a family moved around so much as children, um, as a family, sorry. And uh, one of the reasons why they run a restaurant for six, seven years, um, and he burnt himself out. You know, they used to work all through the day, through the evening, and they'd get to burn out. And more and more I see now is that people burn themselves out and then they have to change what they're doing or stop or that could lead to poor decisions and that's what um that's what I really wanted to talk about today how we can avoid burnout how we can stop ourselves from getting to that point because business owners we're all quite similar um we're all at a point most business owners can't sit still um are always on the go uh when five o'clock finishes that's not when our day finishes because our mind is still going we might work in the evening uh, we might, might work on a saturday and even a sunday and we always have this feeling like we just need to be pushing on because there's always lots of things to be able to do within your business and that's what then leads to burnout is the always being switched on always being turned up turned on all the time which then leads us to burnout and the really difficult thing when it leads to burnout is really that when you then lose three days the the list gets bigger you also at that time um, are, might not be as present for your family or your friends um, and as a leader of your business also your decision making might not be the best when you're through burnout because to be make good decisions you need to be at the highest point of performance need to be decisive and you need to make decisions because not making a decision is still making a decision so it's really important in your business to ensure that you're always looking after yourself and you're avoiding burnout so today I've got eight tips on how to avoid burnout so we're going to talk through each one and how you can go about doing that and I've I've not mastered this completely but I've just been through three of the toughest months of business after I had my stroke and coming back in I've had three months back and it's been probably the toughest three months since probably I lost it all back in 2019 and I've managed to avoid burnout by doing exactly this and that's why I really wanted to talk about this today so the first one the first tip is self-care um, self-care when looking after yourself so w- around that is exercise now over the last three months I've been exercising a lot I've been training um, for the marathon I've actually made a decision not to do the marathon this year because I'm still waiting on some um, some data back from from the doctor on my stroke Um, but I've still maintained a level of training but what I have done is my training was really high for the first two months and then as I got into a um, into the place where I started to really start to feel fatigued and tired. I didn't stop exercise. What I used to do is when I get to a point where a business would get stressful and life would get stressful, I would stop exercising. But what I did is I just slowed my exercising down. I didn't do longer runs. I run a lot. Um, that's main main core. 80% of my exercise is running. But I would just maintain at a slower pace. I would just maintain doing three, five Ks a week. But I would maintain doing the fitness because that actually keeps 
you in a place where the energy flows still that you're not completely because what happens tends to happen is when we stop exercising that's when we let other things seep in like overeating maybe over drinking um you know not getting out of bed first thing in the morning and one of the key things is looking after yourself and maintaining a routine and over the last two or three weeks i've felt really sluggish really slow when exercising but i've not given myself a hard time over it so one of the first tips i can say is is exercise and self-care and that leads into the second tip which is sleep sleep is so important i learned this last year that there is one day of the year every year where in especially in men that um, heart attacks and strokes go up by 30 percent and when I ask this question, people often say to me, um, is it Christmas Day? Is it New Year's Day? Is it uh, their birthday? You know, are, is it Easter? All these different things. And I actually found out that it is the day of the year that the clocks go back. And that is because you lose an hour's, of, hour's worth of sleep because sleep is the, one of the most important things we can do. I've always talked about morning routines in the past and how important a morning routine is. And recently I learned how important an evening routine is. And it's something that I'm still learning to do. But things like turning your laptop off at least a couple of hours before you go to bed, not eating late in the evening, making sure that you go to bed at the same time, making sure that you're not um, looking at really bright screens. Like I've got a, um, a set of um, like gaming glasses that um, I put on probably about seven, eight o'clock in the evening, which then just means my eyes start to calm down slightly. And your sleep is probably one of the most important things you can do to stop yourself from getting into burnout, making sure that you have seven and a half and to eight hours sleep every evening, like every nutritionist, personal trainer, anybody that's a health practitioner, any podcast or book that you ever read, sleep is one of the key pillars to ensuring that you maintain a healthy and long life. And it's exactly the same with avoiding burnout. And quite often we burn out because we're working hard because maybe our business isn't where we want it to be or we've got some big goals. But what, what then actually happens is, is if you're not sleeping properly because you're working late in the evening, that's going to have a detrimental effect on your decision making the next day, your energy levels and then getting to the point of burnout. So have a think about your sleep routine, what time you go to bed and what time you're getting up. If you don't track this already, get yourself a Fitbit, a Whoop or a, or a Garmin or whatever, um, whatever health tracking or there's now Aurora, Aura Rings or lots of different ways to track this and track your data. Like we always say numbers play a uh, huge part of decision making in business. This is the same with your health. So the next thing is nutrition. What you put into your body is so important. If you put shit in, you're going to be able to put shit out. If you want to maintain high performance, you need to have a think about what you're eating. I recently read a really good book which completely changed what I think about all foods. And it, I've tried so many different diets in the past, whether it's keto, whether it be you know Tim Ferriss's four-hour workout or whatever. I can't remember the name of the book. Um, and I used to literally crash diet to the point that I would starve myself and then I'd literally go to town in Tesco's on a Saturday morning and buy the whole bakery section. And it's so important to be maintaining a good level of nutrition. And the book that I read, if you want to read it, was called Glucose Revolution. It's literally changed how I eat. And it's not even to the point that my meals have changed. It's the same meals. It's just the order I eat in. But my, my, my basically, my, my diet now, is very much a natural diet of um, veg, carbs, meat, and just cutting out most sugar. Not all sugar, because like yesterday, I went to Brighton with a family and we ended up in sprinkles and had a small amount of ice cream. So I'm not going to tell you to cut out all the sweet things, but one of the things that you can do to help maintain your fitness and not burn out is by eating well. Um, and that's not eating less. That's not about going on crash diets and trying to eat less. It's trying to maintain a good, decent three meals a day, keep your nutrition level high uh, and making sure that the energy you're putting in, that the food you're putting into the body is going to create you high energy. And that is another way to stop yourself from burning out. The next one is um, having downtime, making sure that you do take some time out away from your work, away from your screens. And that's not waiting every three months to go on a two weeks holiday because what would then tend to happen is is on that two weeks holiday for the first three days you would end up 
just been burnt out. It used to happen to me all the time. We'd actually go and see my mum and dad um, for a couple of weeks um, in the Mediterranean. And quite often my mum would say when she used to see me and my brother-in-law turn up for the first two or three days, because we'd been working so much, we'd be really different. We'd be tired. We'd be a bit grumpy, a bit grouchy. And then suddenly it'd be like the evolution of man. I, after about three or four days, we'd suddenly start coming out of a shell and start relaxing. So what I'm not talking about is downtime and, oh, look, I've just been on a holiday, so I'll book another one three months. It's making sure that you have downtime. And sometimes it's not even downtime around around your family. It's having to be selfish, to be selfless, to be able to go and do some stuff, go and find yourself around nature, go and uh, go and do your hobbies and making sure that you have some time away. The next one is screen time. I recently went away um, with John Beeson, uh, did an another retreat weekend in Galloway in Scotland. And it was the first time that I think in decades that I turned my smartphone off for three days. I had my brick phone or my present phone. It's like an old Nokia. It's only got snake to text people. It's almost impossible because you've got to like tap through each letter to get to the point you need to. But I literally turned my phone off and for three days I had no noise in my head and I was just clear and I could think and regain my, my thoughts. So I know if you're a business owner, if you're like me, you have probably got your phone clutched your hand quite often. Get yourself away from screens. Make sure that part of your downtime isn't watching films and isn't in front of TikTok and other things because it will just lead to more burnout. And also it will lead to you seeing other business owners and other people living their best lives on social media. And that we know that that's not always true because what we see is not actually what always is. So make sure you stay away from screen times. Make sure that you get out to nature. Like if you're by the sea, if you're by a forest, if you're somewhere, when you go for walks, make sure you're by na nature. Make sure that you can you can get some time out from not being walking around a busy town centre or a busy city. Get that time with nature because it's so important to help reset the mind and reset the brain. Uh, the next one is not for everybody and you all know I love it is cold water therapy so get yourself in a place where you can have a cold shower or you can have an ice bath it for me it's a circuit breaker I always say every weekend I need a circuit breaker sometimes because my head's like a washing machine the more that you can detach yourself and have a circuit breaker and stop yourself from that worrying thought of all of the different things that have happened that you haven't got done or that's happened or not happened that week what is your circuit breaker? Mine is an ice bath, but you might want to find yourself a circuit breaker or something you need to do. It might be going out for a long run. It might be going for a long walk around nature, but mine is certainly having um, an ice bath. It is my little circuit breaker. I've had one this morning already. It helps energize me for the day. And then when you do start to feel yourself like I have like the last few weeks, what I always do, just do what's mission critical. Like we have so many messages and people contacting us and, you know, different things going on. And right now my DMs are full of different people that I've not got back to. And it's not because I'd, I'm, I'm being rude. It's because the last three weeks I've had some, I've just known that my energy levels have been lower and I haven't wanted to get to burnout. If I reply to every every email, if I, if I answer every phone call, if I do everything that's needed, then I'm just going to wear myself thin and get to that burnout point so when I get to these times I just do what's mission critical and what I mean by mission critical is is there's so many different things you can do and, and keep yourself busy in business but what is the most important things that's going to keep the lights on keep the businesses flowing and keep everything going because you can pick up relationships with other people again you've got friends and family around you who understand that you're going through it through difficult times or or things are challenging and, and then they will understand when you come back and say sorry i've not got back to you you know after four weeks or however long it is that you need to be in that state and then you can then go back to them and they'll always understand to so just do what's mission critical so to re recap sleep well eat well exercise self-care downtime no screen time nature um, cold water therapy circuit breakers and only do what's mission critical the most important thing in business is to ensure that you don't get into a cycle of burnout where you work really hard you burn out for a few days because what will happen is you'll lose momentum and if you lose momentum you're then gonna have to work twice as hard to get back into momentum and get back the flow i hope that's helped uh, that's the end of this episode if anybody would like to tell me their tips to avoid burnout just drop me a dm i'll get back to you when i'm not in mission critical mode thanks for listening thank you for listening to the podcast today i'm on a mission to get people to understand that failure is part of the process so please share this far and wide like and subscribe